So here's what we want to talk about today. We're not going to talk about legal advertising or anything like that. Um, you know, there's a lot of buzz right now about the NCAA and student athletes, that term, I want us to remember that down the road, where we're talking about athletes being paid, right, off of their image and likeliness. And, you know, there's everyone's talking about what happened in September of this year where actually the governor of California signed it in the law where student athletes can get paid. But the truth is, you started this fight back in 2014, Back in 2014, tell me how that came about. Well, um, right. I filed uh, legislation uh, that um, would um, further the concept of uh, paying student athletes for the time that they spend associated with the sport that they play. Mm Mm-hmm. When you look at uh, particularly D1, Division I athletes, they spend more time associated with that sport, whether football, basketball, et cetera, mm-hmm. than the average American work week in excess of 40 hours. Uh, but they can't sign their own name for a soda. Uh, there's something fundamentally wrong with that equation, mm-hmm. uh, you know, people say, well, they're in school to get an education. We're fooling ourselves. Uh, they spend more time uh, associated with the sport than they do in class. Mm. In fact, their class schedule is built around practice, game day, travel. And so I just thought that we need to stop this business uh, of um, 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 uh, now allowing these guys to cash in mm-hmm. on the multi-billion dollar enterprise mm-hmm. that's currently uh, uh, in the NCAA. And so that's why I filed in 2014 a bill. Now I can go into the specifics of Oh, that. please do, please. Well, back then, um, I was solely associated or concerned with two two aspects. Number one, the number of hours they spent uh, associated with the sport. So I set up a compensation matrix that would simply be based on the number of hours associated with the sport, training, film, travel, game day. We add all those hours up and we multiply it times the federal minimum wage. Uh, which is $7.25 an hour. Not a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But what you have to understand is that these students don't w- have work-study jobs because of the demands of their, uh, their, their, their training schedule. And in most cases, they're putting in more time than some NFL people. You're right, NFL, uh, because they are at a uh, lower level and need to train up right. uh, to a higher level. And so uh, the average college student is allowed to work in uh, the library. He gets he or she gets a paycheck, but not the not the uh, D one or the, any uh, quite frankly any college athlete who is uh, playing uh, a sport. Mm-hmm. So the first the first aspect of the bill would address um, them getting paid for the time that right. they spend. Not a lot of money, people. Oh, you're going to make them rich. Uh, $7.25 is not a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need to raise the minimum wage, by the way. Uh, but uh, uh, that would that would compensate them there. And then the second aspect of the bill that we filed back in 2014 uh, simply recognized that these players are going to have life-lasting injuries. Hmm. Uh, when you look at, on average, the average uh, uh, college athlete, uh, they are getting significant blows to the body, not only in practice, but game day and other activities associated with the sport. Now, they have health care while they're in college, uh, but many of them don't graduate uh, and don't go on to the NFL, and they have uh, life-lasting injuries. You can see them limping around the uh, stadiums and game day. Uh, sidelined uh, for the rest of their lives. And Marcus uh, Lattimore is a perfect example. And, and well, that, that that'll take me to the point. I filed the legislation. Mm-hmm. Now I went to uh, so so so. Let me just finish the trust fund 
matrix. So um, I read the decision O'Bannon, uh, which was a Ninth Circuit opinion written by Claudia Wilkin, um, wherein uh, uh, there were some stati statisticians uh, formulating how much it would take uh, you know, if you put an annuity in uh, for a certain number of years, how much it would take to fund a health care plan for a player who mm -hmm. graduated. Mm -hmm. uh, I discounted that number somewhat. Um, but essentially what, what we came up with was $2,500 per semester. Um, and uh, uh, a player would receive $5,000 per semester, el eligible for five years if he or she is a redshirt freshman, so that if they graduate and pass a successful literacy uh, financial literacy course, mm -hmm. that player would have a trust fund set up uh, to be awarded after graduation of $25,000. They could put that into an annuity and uh, pay out over, or over some time to somewhat offset the medical expenses that they would incur in the future. Um, we won't penalize NFL athletes. Those few people who go on to the NFL, they would be entitled to that as well. Correct. Um, but so we have the, 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 the compensation matrix for the number of hours, mm -hmm. and then we have the medical trust fund that does not vest in a student until he or she graduates and successfully passes a financial literacy course, literacy course. Therefore, you're given an, another incentive to graduate mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well, and, and you learn how to manage the money in the process. So wow. those were the two components. But why did I file all of this? Right. Well, you know, as you correctly point out, I went to a historically black college, a Morehouse College. And uh, while we appreciated our football team, the major activity – uh, at HBCU was the uh, the tailgate party, uh, and so th those of us that went to the game, there weren't mm -hmm. a whole lot of people watching the game. We were outside, sort of bantering ideas and uh, discussing life, and right. over a few libations uh, in the parking lot. So mm -hmm. that was the big. So when I got, you know, fast forward, um, graduated from Morehouse back in 1991, and in, uh, I believe it was 1997, I went to law school. I took a few years off and was a banker in between and went to the University of South Carolina. The whole town shuts down at that time for a, a, a football team that wasn't, wasn't winning that many games. And that's still true today. Uh, <laughs> but the whole – I, I never witnessed something. I mean, the hell with the university. It, the whole school was focused around game day. They started game day on Wednesday. Uh, this was just something that was I was not accustomed to. Mm -hmm. So even as a law student, uh, many of the law students were talking about on Wednesday night the football game. So uh, I was fortunate enough to... Uh, matriculate in law school while Steve Spurrier was there and Marcus Lattimore was there and mm -hmm. Javon Clowney and they had they started winning games mm -hmm. uh, so I get tickets to the game and I was just amazed at how many people would go to a football we're talking about football not to minimize it but right. this is you know we, we in college we yeah. you know we in law school we're going to see a football game the number 80,000 plus, and they'd come and the night before cook out all day and stay after the game. And this was a commercial enterprise. Um, so I was unaccustomed to it. So it was, it was first impression mm -hmm. to, to, to me. I'd seen it on TV, but being there real life. Well, I would watch Mr. Lattimore and others carry that ball up and down the field. And I witnessed him getting hit in the knee. I think it was a game against Tennessee. And, yeah, I think it was Tennessee. Uh, uh, it really uh, significantly impacted his uh, prospects for the NFL. Mm -hmm. um, and I just felt that that was fundamentally unfair um, 
to have his NFL hopes um, um, sidelined in that fashion. Uh, so I began to start thinking about how uh, we needed to bring uh, economic justice to the field. Now, at that time, I was a law student, uh, wasn't in the South Carolina General Assembly. Fast mm-hmm. forward to, I, I graduated law school 2000, uh, fast forward to 2014. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, we still had a winning team, and uh, we, I just uh, felt that uh, it was time to appropriately address this issue with my colleagues in the General Assembly. And therefore, we set up um, those, uh, those, two, those two critical aspects to the components that we filed the legislation in 2014. This message is for business owners out there. Do you guys remember David Copperfield? He was a famous magician. And one of the things he was actually known for was making the Statue of Liberty disappear. Well, when it comes into marketing and advertising, a lot of business owners actually expect us, us marketing and advertising agencies, to be magicians. The truth is, we can't always do that. We can't make things appear or things disappear in terms of the people that should actually be showing up in your showroom or leads to your business. But what we do do is we actually hold you accountable. And sometimes when we hold you accountable, you gotta listen. You deserve very important placement. Here at Craft Creative, we make some hard hitting ads. Uh, I recently saw a story on CBS and uh, the NCAA's Board of Governors, they made this statement that the pay must be consistent with the collegiate model. Now, there was there was a lot of ambiguity there. Mm-hmm. Tell me exactly, what does this mean? Well, I, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's very vague, yeah. uh, as you point out. Um, the only thing I can think of is he is drawing some type of relationship with the current cost of attendance okay. uh, beyond uh, room and board that athletes receive. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it varies from school, but uh, when you're talking about Carolina and Clemson, it works out to be about three hundred dollars a month for uh, the, uh, the the sports athletes, and they can use that money uh, for haircuts and uh, the the uh, the incidentals uh, mm-hmm. that are associated with uh, attending school, going to the movie, et cetera. Uh, pales in comparison to the over a hundred million dollars that both universities generate uh, from their athletic programs yearly. Wow! Uh, and now you know uh, Coach Dabo Sweeney, who's doing an outstanding job, uh, but he makes his salary now and with bonus and benefits rivals the CEOs on Wall Street. He's making about twelve million dollars. The highest paid coach of college, uh, I think, uh, now. All in. And then, of course, uh, Muschamp, who's just hanging in there at the <laughs> university, he's, I believe his uh, compensation package is in upwards of $8 million. Uh, and so, look, the reality is uh, there's a big disparity. Mm-hmm. These guys would not be in this position but for uh, the athletes on the field. Uh, and this business about uh, making it consistent with what uh, I don't know what the term he used was consistent with collegiate yeah, model well that's a bunch of BS <laughs> uh, and what that is is foreshadowing that uh, they're doing this and making these statements to try to placate mm-hmm. uh, the number of states who have uh, expressed a desire uh, in some fact have already filed legislation to weigh into this. Uh, I intend to continue to pursue this in the state of South Carolina. I will be filing a bill uh, probably tomorrow uh, to incorporate yet another uh, component uh, to uh, the previously discussed bill. Uh, And so we will add the name, the likeness, and the image uh, to the the, the cornerstone mm-hmm. of, of the bill so that an athlete, a student athlete, can engage an agent to negotiate a package uh, in the private market um, to compensate him or her for her name, mm-hmm. her like, his, him or his or her likeness, and his or her image. Think about this for a moment. 
uh, Eric. We're talking about somebody's name. Why does the university have a right to Eric Elliott or Marlon Kempson? Mm -hmm. Why do they have the right to my face? Uh, we, you know, there's so much talk about private industry. Let the market forces handle. Well, that's good for the college student too. Think about this: the chemistry student who does not play college sports, he or she works a work study job and can get paid for it in the physics lab. Then they can create an app and sell it to Apple for millions of dollars. There are no prohibitions on their ability to earn revenue off of their intellectual property. But here we are, we put restraints on college students. Uh, we don't allow these college students to cash in on their hours associated on the field nor their property rights. With mm -hmm. the, it, it's my name. It's my property right. Well, there's actually a big, uh, there's a big dispute about, you know, the image and likeliness. Uh, I saw it in a Netflix film called Student Athlete where uh, this there's an athlete. He's now destitute, but his image and likeliness were in some of like the, uh, uh, the EA Sports video games, and he wasn't getting paid for that. Yeah. Right? Well, you're so talking now, about O'Bannon. That, oh, that's that, Steve O'Bannon. Uh, his, his picture... His jersey, that's him. He wow. he found out about it, his friend's uh, son playing a video game. Hey, buddy, you know your name? No, hell no, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and so we got to stop this business. This is 2019, mm -hmm. and it's time to bring some fundamental fairness uh, to the football field. Do you think this would put some universities at a, at a disadvantage? Let's just say uh, Charleston Southern. Right there's a football team at Charleston Southern, and then there is an athlete who may quarterback for Clemson, same position. Does that put the school at a disadvantage when it comes to recruiting, if they're now able to earn off their image and likeliness? Because an agent may say, "I want that Clemson student more than I want that Charleston well, Southern." The reality student. is they're already at a disadvantage. Tell mm -hmm. me one quarterback that's going to Charleston Southern over Clemson. Uh, Clemson just built a, a $30 million training facility. Okay, mm -hmm. they got a golf course, a barbershop, swimming pool. And you mean to tell me somebody who gets recruited for Clemson is going to go to Charleston Southern, they got one exit and a library. Uh, so mm -hmm. you, 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 you're not. Now, my bill, quite frankly, only addresses uh, colleges and universities that earn over $50 million by their sports program. So really, in the state of South Carolina, we're only talking about Carolina and Clemson. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned before, I've seen the uh, profit and loss statements um, and the revenue generated uh, uh, from those two universities, respectively, is in excess of $100 million, largely borne by the uh, football programs uh, and the basketball programs and in University of South Carolina's case the women's basketball generates mm -hmm. a lot of revenue and so when you look at the financial statements they zero out the income because as a non-profit you don't want to show any income mm -hmm. but you look at the highest uh, categories and those are salaries Got it. Uh, and that's where all the money is going even the assistant coaches in football are making about three to four million dollars a year mm. Um, and then, to the extent there's money left over, you know where that money goes? To subsidize the equestrian team or the swim team because they don't generate any revenue from ticket sales. Mm -hmm. So how, tell me this. How do you think it's fundamentally fair for a, uh, a high-poverty student who can't afford for his mother to travel to see him play football or basketball? for the university to take the money generated off the back of that young man or young woman and buy a new horse for the equestrian team. Wow. Uh, it's just, uh, we got to right these wrongs. Uh, and this has changed. It, it, you know, no longer does the PE teacher serve as the head football coach on Friday and Saturday. Uh, no longer do head coaches have responsibilities other than coaching with the university. There was a time where, you know, 
the NCAA, when the NCAA was created, it was never imagined that they would be negotiating with uh, ESPN for television rights in excess of $7 billion. We are now uh, approaching over $16 billion on an annual basis uh, by this uh, cartel Mm -hmm. uh, called the NCAA. Uh, this is a money heavy sports industry that needs to be reined in and we need to allow these young men and women who spend more than an average American work week associated with the sport uh, to earn some revenue like their other classmates and so that's why we fight this fight so let's just say we're talking about schools of access of 50 or 100 million let's just say if there's Two schools. I mean, one school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think uh, we could use Clemson or Carolina, you know, because they're kind of the obvious choices in our state. Um, if there are two teammates, do they get paid the same amount? Well, that that is so. So for the the first component with it, which is the compensation stipend component. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Seven twenty five an hour times the number of hours. Got it. For the second component, the medical trust fund, everybody gets paid the same thing. $2,500 uh, per semester, red shirt freshman and got five years. Most people have four years. Mm -hmm. 20000 between twenty and 25000 after they graduate from college. For the third component, it's just a function of the market. Okay. Uh, if I have an agent and I am an outstanding player, my agent goes to the market to negotiate with an insurance company or a barbershop or a car dealership to use my name, my likeness, and my image in their advertisement. The university doesn't pay this, by the way. Got it. It's to the students. Now, mm -hmm. here's what we do. Uh, you know, we got smart people in the room, including me. Mm -hmm. uh, we can figure this out. Uh, there may be some matrix that we set up because... You know, I will admit we may not want a bunch of multimillionaires in, 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 in college and it may uh, have a negative impact on the team. Right. But that's actually real life. You know, in college you, you have multimillionaire uh, students who are, come from families that are re very wealthy. Yep. Their families earn that money in the private market. Okay. So we, we're really getting students prepared to see this dichotomy of uh, collective differences in mm -hmm. the demographics and right. the income levels of students. But I'm open to some type of matrix being set up for categories uh, so that there is some parity. Uh, you have the first string players, the second string players, and the third string players mm -hmm. in that order. And maybe you can't make so much you know, maybe you cap it, uh, or you have three different categories. But it's definitely uh, open. It's definitely open for discussion on how it, you how they can be. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, this whole business uh, is about raising the issue um, and 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 forcing the NCAA to address the issue. But what we will not accept. What, what's that quote you read? Uh, it says pay must be consistent with the collegiate. What model. we will not accept. It's this failed collegiate model that's been failing our athletes not recognizing their full economic potential uh, that's unacceptable and so we will continue to push forward for a reasonable plan that incorporates uh, what we believe the students deserve now we're all fans of college football and, and one of the things that have happened today is in, in this day and age is the NFL has lost viewership and we all know this um, they don't have the diehard fans of the way college football teams do. Um, do you think introducing or even having a pay scale, even if it's a fair one, do you think it could hurt college football? You know, there was testimony, and I read the whole transcript of the O'Bannon case, uh, and there was testimony as what impact would this have on college sports? Mm -hmm. the experts say no, hmm. as long as everybody does it. It has no impact. So that's a lot of rhetoric. Uh, sure, there are people pissed off at home. I got a brother who went to Clemson. And he's, to this day, 
still envious of the football player that took his girlfriend and had a better stake. Uh, so you've got, you got people out here who are just simply uh, hating on these guys yeah. and these girls because they had better lodging. They got better food. Right. They, you know, got tutors. Uh, and so I can't help that. Yeah. Okay. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't, can't. Can't solve that right, problem. Right. Uh, but um, you. You definitely will have some people who, no matter what happens, they. They. You know, whether they get paid or not, they're still envious of these people. Um, but it's. It, you know, it's a new day. It's. It's 2019. College sports is different now. And by the way, we're not just talking about football. Oh, absolutely and not. Basketball. I. I looked at a. Uh, uh, a segment on a gymnast uh, who's uh, matriculating at a university. And what she said when California passed this bill, now I can realize my full potential because as a gymnast, unless she goes to the Olympics, her full potential is in college. And so there are local places that she grew up in that want to say, hey, Mary Lou... Uh, Mary Lou Retton. Mary Lou Retton. We, you know, we. Dominique we, Dawes. Yeah, Dominique. Know? We want you on this television commercial when you, when you. We want to use your name on this commercial when you in college. We saw you swim that swim meet, and so now this opens up an opportunity for them in college and universities, such that they may, they they will have an economic source to launch into a professional career, that. Nine times in ten won't be in sports because there's no professional uh, gymnasts other than, the, of course, the Olympics and things of that nature, uh, where 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 there's not a market after college. So, how do you? I want to ask this question, and then we'll we'll kind of we'll kind of end it here because this this is something we could talk about for a long time, and and I think this is going to be a topic of discussion for a long time for a lot of folks. How do you think it makes the students feel when they hear a coach getting multi millions of dollars and you know the chances of them getting into the NFL are very slim and they've given it their all they just weren't what the NFL teams needed during draft time but they walk away with nothing Well that uh, quite frankly that's why we have in this conversation uh, you know, look, I'm not hating on the coaches. No, not I, at all. I, I not pro- at all. I, I don't pro- want I, I pro- anyone to think that we think the coaches don't deserve whatever they get, and we're not disputing. Well, that. I, I do yeah. have a question as to whether they deserve it, but look, that's the market. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's just how the market works. I, I'm a, uh, I have a uh, very successful law firm. I'm a partner in a very successful law firm, and when I get my fee, uh, you know, it shudders. People shudder sometimes, but you know what? I'm getting that fee because I'm good. Same thing with the uh, college athlete. Uh, they should not be deprived of the ability to earn uh, compensation. Mm-hmm. They're putting in an enormous amount of work, psychologically, emotional stress, uh, physical injuries, the coaches are merely uh, benefiting from the labor of these young men and women. Now, they're good coaches, and they're smart to be in this position, but they're only in this position uh, because of the talent that they've recruited at these universities. And keep in mind, if you look at some of the coaches' contracts, they get bonus money for playoff games. Now, why should you get a bonus for doing your job. And I want to exclude my law firm uh, <laughs> from that. <laughs> I don't want Joe Rice to hear this one. But, but, but you know, they're they making bonus money for playoff games. And so he, 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 here's the thing. Um, the students can't sign their name wow. for a soda. And we got to really just think about that for a moment and change the conversation to focus on the the college player, which, by the way, who you've correctly identified, 98% do not go on to professional sports. 
They can have an injury like uh, Mr. Lattimore and, and, quite frankly, so many others. Uh, you take Deshaun Watson. I remember him yeah. playing a, a game uh, for Clemson with a torn ACL. Send him in. He still got mobility. Send him in. Now, if he had gotten hurt, hurt his, his whole career gone. And so there is no replacement for those millions of dollars. These, these are tens of millions of dollars in contracting opportunities that they forgo for running that football up and down the field or driveling that rock up and down the field uh, at the coach's instruction. So I'm not mad at the coaches, but all I'm simply saying is when we pay the coaches, we ought to pay the players. And what we're not talking about is a lot of money on those first two components. We're talking about a trust fund for health care. Right. We're talking about minimum wage for hourly. And we're talking about the ability of a student to earn revenue on his or her own name from a third party. So the people that say I'm going to bankrupt the sports, they, they hadn't read the plan. And we will be articulating that. I'll we'll be joined by Representative Justin Bamberg, who's a well-known lawyer in South Carolina and a really good advocate for these men and women in college. And we'll be filing this legislation uh, in the coming week. State Senator Marlon Kimson. I think this has been uh, probably one of our, our most fiery episodes yet. This has been the AdCast. Thank you for listening to the AdCast, the podcast for marketers and advertisers. Please be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever podcasts are found.